everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. In this one, we're going to be covering the tropics. And I know what you're probably thinking, Ty, I thought it was going to be an active season. I thought so too, but we've been dealing with a lot of dry air over the tropics, especially over towards that main development region. Not much in the way of storm systems have been coming into the Gulf right now, and at times wind shear has also been a factor. There may be some signs of some more imminent changes after these next seven days but there are still going to be some inhibiting factors here but the problem is if we still can get something to go off here it could be big and more than likely it will be somewhere within a zone past that 60 degree line and past the 60 degree degree line it's nothing but land so big concern there if that ends up being the case here but that's that's the wild card at this point if that will happen so the thing that we mentioned with the wind shear we're looking at that map right now as you can see over towards the main development region not really much going on here wind shear is relatively light so you would think okay with this pattern here it setup's a little bit more favorable especially as we get further along with this model run here and you would be so and typically i would be inclined to believe that you would be correct the problem that these systems that will come off of West Africa have been dealing with are these little patches of brown right here. This is dry air. In this case, actually, it's hard and dust. So these will choke out any storm that tries to develop over the open water and will not allow them to flourish. And as you can see here, we continue to have periods of heavy uh, Saharan dust and dry air in general over the region. There are a couple areas that could possibly develop towards the end of the month here, but really that dust stays uh, pretty persistent as time goes on here. So we get towards the middle and back into this model run here though, I am seeing a signal for a potential system to develop here right towards the beginning of September and maybe another system to follow it. But after that, we start to get more of that dry air to come in again. And with that, that could limit tropical activity across the main development region in general. We don't have the same problems over towards the Gulf of Mexico right now. There is some dry air that's gonna be hanging around over the course of this week. But if we go further along here, you can see a lot of moisture starts to move in. A lot of moisture even moves into the US as we start September out. So. Any system that could develop over here, I would be especially interested in. It's not uncommon that we get storm systems, but we haven't had many cold fronts go through the central part of the U.S. Most of the activity has been much further up to the north. And if you could get an adjacent cold front to come in across maybe the southern and central parts of the U.S., you could sometimes get something to develop in the Gulf here. It just really hasn't happened. But... I do think that potential may increase just a little bit as time goes on. All we would really need is just for a low pressure area to pop up over here and things could get going. But in any case though, if we were to go ahead and look at our ensemble models as we go further along here, watch this. Watch where these little L's are. These red L's are low pressure right here. So notice how as time goes on, I'm gonna stop this real quick. We're at the 31st just like how we saw in that GFS ensemble, we're starting to see areas of interest start to pop up over towards the main development region. It's gonna be right around where that dry air is, but so I don't expect these to develop immensely, but in any case though, this is something we'll have to watch. Other thing to keep an eye on here is how the high pressure will behave over the course of the next few days as well, because I think that this is gonna play a big part in where these storms end up going. If these storms develop pretty quickly, what I would expect them to do is to develop fast and then take that turn to the north, staying away from land. It's really not until we get over here towards the Antilles, the uh, greater Antilles region here, where I would be more concerned about potential impacts here. So as we go further along here, this, I'm new to this website, by the way, so I'm trying to figure out if there's any sort of hotkeys. There we go. And as you can see, we start to see more and more areas of low pressure developing over time here. And this is getting into those first couple of days of September. And I've noticed a significant pressure drop with some of these as well. 
this is of course towards the main development region we're going to rewind back to take a look at the gulf here but this is us going through the loop again this is over towards cape verde or cape verde and then of course as we get towards the end of this upcoming week this is where we see some areas of interest really start to uh flourish here towards the main development region now let's go over towards the gulf and over towards the caribbean now these areas right here are also points of interest as well but a lot of these don't really get going this however is what's caught my eye more so than anything else i looked at this before the start of the video here and watch what this does here you see that number that number is dropping that's pressure with stronger storms the lower the pressure so as time goes on this goes under a thousand millibars so this would be at least a tropical storm if not stronger maybe even a hurricane if this does develop now keep in mind this is a storm that hasn't even formed yet so this could literally just be hearsay but if this does get going that could be an impact for the gulf coast here particularly towards maybe biloxi mobile as time goes on obviously we're looking pretty far out at this point this could be one impactful storm and then there could be others that follow behind this as well now this model only goes out about 10 days so we're probably going to be doing more updates on this especially if things continue to progress and we start seeing more runs like this if time goes on because that might be a big problem but that's pretty much all i got here for the atlantic right now we're actually going to change things up today and talk also about the pacific because in the times where we've been talking about the Atlantic only, there's been some interesting developments, particularly over towards Hawaii. This wasn't a landfalling hurricane, but Hurricane Hone did make a close pass and is causing disruptive weather all over the Big Island in Hawaii right now. In fact, you look over to that bottom left corner, you can see a camera of what we were looking at just a little earlier over towards Hawaii right now. We have uh, increased swelling of the oceans over here towards the region. We also have Gilma, which is on the way, and another system behind Gilma to go along with it. So Gilma formed earlier than Hone, but Hone was a little bit further out to the west at this point. Now, Gilma looks like it could have made landfall in Hawaii, but the problem is this storm is going to weaken exponentially really that's not even a problem that's actually good news still going to bring squally weather but not going to have any major impacts from this most likely the storm stall only way this could really do anything is if the storm stalls out and just dumps a bunch of rain on the islands but outside of that nothing major to really discuss with this do have a system with a heightened chance of development beyond that point it's a uh, 90 percent this is technically back towards the eastern pacific Pretty much a similar deal there pacific's been really active this year it's almost ironic that it's been active in spite of how quiet the atlantic has been it's like it's literally been the uh, inverse so to speak here <clears throat> here's what the two systems look like on satellite this is hone right here very close past to the big island over here this is going to start the weekend of course as time goes on and then as we go further back over towards the east here this is Gilma right now. Gilma is actually a category four right now. But of course, as we've mentioned before, we expect Gilma to be weakening over the next few days. Now, here's something that's going to come out of left field for you guys as well. So we looked at the Atlantic. We looked at the Eastern and Central Pacific. Now we're going to look at the Northwestern Pacific, where some big is kind of going on right now. And what I'm talking about is Typhoon Shanshan. Typhoon Shanshan is on the way to Japan here and is expected to be the equivalent of a Category 2 at landfall and may strengthen all the way up to Category 3. So we're going to actually try to see if we can't cover this here because when I looked at the timing for when landfall is expected to occur here, <clears throat> I looked and I saw 8 o'clock and this is local time. So in reality, if we go by eight o'clock local time, that would be about seven o'clock Eastern. And this will be on the 27th. The 27th will be on a Tuesday. So there's a good chance that we could go live and cover this if 
there isn't severe weather ongoing here in the U.S., which there is some forecast. So could be interesting uh, in regards to uh, what we end up doing here. I would definitely uh, love to do an international stream. I don't mind doing these. But um, this is what Shanshan looks like right now. The prefecture that it's expected to hit, I think, is Ahime. Ahime? I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it right. But Ahime Prefecture may be receiving a direct hit from this big storm. So making some headlines in the metal community, in the weather community. Wow. <clears throat> Got those mixed up. We we blend both here, I know. But in any case, though, Xian Shan looks like it's going to be a pretty serious storm for the region here. We're actually going to go ahead and take a look at some of the spaghetti models here before we get out of here. A lot of these are keeping it relatively weak. Now, one thing to remember is National Hurricane Center does not have any jurisdiction over this area. This is the joint, if I remember correctly, it's the joint typhoon something. I can't remember the name. Joint typhoon. Daggone it. <laughs> I'll have to look that up in a second. Joint typhoon warning center. I don't know how I got that botched up so bad. Don't really look at this area much, as you know. You can add that as a blooper for sure. But in any case, though, pretty significant storm on the way here. Like I said, I'm, I'm interested to see what this does. I may actually end up covering this as well as time goes on. If you want to see me do that, definitely make sure you're hitting that like button. In any case, though, it looks like we're going to be pretty busy here on the channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and have that notification bell on too for future updates on Xian Shan and anything else that's going on in either the U.S., really the world at this point but that being said that's the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed if you did you know what to do smash that like button once more hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys in the next one until then have a great rest of your day